How are you guys all doing today? Good. Yeah. Good. Well, today I'm gonna go over kind of the second part. I mean, we went over the first half of Thessalonians, First Thessalonians, chapter one, last time, and uh, this is gonna be for examples to follow. And I'm gonna go ahead and read verse six through ten. And ye become followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost, so that ye may, so that you were examples to all that believe in Macedonia and Archaea. For from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Archaea, but also in every place of faith to God. To, to God word and spread abroad so that we need to speak any so we need not to speak anything for they themselves show us what manner of entering and we were unto you and how ye turned to God for idols from idols to serve the living and true God and to wait for your son from heaven whom he raised from the dead you even Jesus, which delivers us from the wrath to come. So, imitation is a strong, is a strong tendency in people. You know, children copy other children. Yeah, you, know, you also got adults. You know, children copy the adults, yeah. and even adults copy other adults. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah, you know, it's just like. For an example, sportsmen, tradesmen, and professionals copy the actions of others in order to develop skills to better their careers. So, I mean, they, they, they'll take one thing that a guy did that made his business successful and he'll copy that. Yeah. But, you know, going to this, in chapter 1 of Thessalonians, it say much about imitation. Verses 6 through 10 describes a great beginning made by the Thessalonians when they were when they responded to the gospel. Their actions were imitations of the lives of the Lord and His disciples. Whom should, whom should we imitate? Jesus. Okay. How can we do this? Stay in the Word. Stay in the Word. You know? And who should we be examples for? The world. Everyone. Everybody. Everyone. Whether you're a Christian or not, it doesn't matter. You know, uh, okay, a common saying is Christians, Christianity is better caught than taught. Meaning, that is, that is better and easier to learn God's will by seeing it done in others. Yeah, but another saying is, Christianity is better taught than caught. Which emphasizes the, the benefit of knowing God's perfect word and knowing that every Christian behaves imperfectly and is therefore an imperfect model. There was only one that was perfect. That was Jesus. So, we have to strive to be perfect, but we also got to know that we won't ever achieve perfection in a sense in this life. But, the truth is that Christianity is better learned if both taught and caught. We must be taught God's will, but we must also see Christianity in the lives of others. God has given us an example of a perfect life in Jesus. Be aware of the power of living a godly life as an example for others, as an example for others to follow as they try to put God's word into action. So it's not just about, I know what this says, it's about coming out and showing people, you know, you meet somebody on the street somewhere that is interested or may not be interested at all, say something. It's an action. It's a godly one. You know, coming to church, you know, coming to classes and participating in classes and everything, that's an action of, you know, God, that's what he wants us to do. Um, preaching up here, you know. I ran in coming up here and preaching. 
Amen. That's an action from God. For the Thessalonians, it was a burden from the day they obeyed the gospel. And I say that because most of the cities of the ancient world were only a few hundred families. So, you know, a lot of your cities weren't like today where you got millions and millions of people, you know, in the city, or hundreds of thousands or twenties of thousands. You know, you maybe had 800 people in a big city back then. It wasn't like they had a lot of people. So, when the gospel was preached in such a small community, everyone would know who had changed their convictions. So, the neighbors would know. And most of your neighbors didn't like that. Because they had been taught from birth many gods. They had sacrifices, they had temples they went to, they had, you know, they had a lot of different things they did. And that and that they not like that that they had become Christians. Abusings and beatings and racism started, you know. So that was a tribulation. Something we were actually talking about in men's class this morning was tribulations. And uh, the tribulations, in spite of these situations, the Thessalonians church were filled with joy. This is hard for us to comprehend because, you know, we actually didn't experience that quite as like they did. You know, because I, I leave here today, I'm not going to get beat in the street because I'm a Christian. I mean, I mean that's I mean that's what was happening to him, a lot of them. You know. And how did they develop such an attitude? The human the human spirit with the feelings of hurt, discrimination, isolation, had given on to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit guided them in that, it helped them walk through it, and that's what guides us every day. You know. When you read your Bible, you don't read it from here, you read it from here. <coughs> If you read it from here, you'll get the truth every time. You reassured this. Christians at God's love. Who reassured the Christians of God's love, friendship, God's peace and security. When they thought on this blessings, they rejoiced. When they thought on these blessings, blessings, they joyed. And they had seen Paul behave in this way because he had learned to be, be content in whatever circumstances. That's Philippians 4.11. They had made the choices by imitating God and godly people. They had chosen the best path. So, when Paul preached, a lot of the Thessalonians seen how he acted. They saw the benefits he had. So they, they imitated him. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to imitate Jesus. We're trying to be, walk the path that he is. You know, God's way. And being an example for others. Okay? Choosing God's way is the best way for us. But it is also, a good, it is also good for others when, they, when we make this choice. God had always used people to help others learn His way. We sometimes think, think what happens in a local congregation is no one's business. That's not right. Okay. We have sometimes mistaken anatomy. The, con the congregation's need to manage its own affairs under God's direction for independence and isolation. Well... The biblical example of this is to share news, even to the people on the other side of the world. And what's the good news? Word, right? So, the smallest congregation can be an encouraging example to others in the town, state, country, continent, the world. One congregation, this congregation can do that. I have faith in strong Amen. If the members are willing to participate, the Christian aid and even in difficult circumstances, sometimes we think only the bigger congregations should be our examples. 
I see that a lot. A lot of people say, well, this church is this big, so we should follow their example. Doesn't mean they're teaching the truth. You know, but the influence of these new Christians should remind us that even one eager soul in a small congregation can have can help provide an example to their largest church around. It only takes one. You know, that's how it usually started back then. It started with one, and all of a sudden it was boom, 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 and then you had an entire city. You know. Find out good news in our congregations and in another congregation and pass it on. You, know. you also got to lead, uh, lead others to be examples. So, as the gospel was spread in Thessalonica, the teachers found themselves out of a job. They kind of did, you know. The teachers, the students had taken over. They had learned the lessons well, and the new Christians were telling everyone about the gospel. Not just in the area, but around the world. Okay. People were hearing about the good news and how to benefit, how to benefit from it. So people joyfully told others about what was happening. And that's only him. And Paul and the others did not have to try to get people to listen. People just seen it because they saw the actions in others. They saw the benefits. They heard the word. The two key things. It worked hand in hand. The message travel faster than their teachers. Genuine faith will change people's lives in a good way. Okay, I mean that's everybody's got to have faith in God. That He's going to be there. He's going to help us. He's going to provide for us. Others will see the results and will want to know the cause, and they'll pass it on. They'll look at that and say, well, how, how does he feel so good about himself? How does he have so much joy? Well, I have joy because I believe in God, and I know that if I believe in him, that I will get salvation. You know, I will not perish. And But once they learn this truth, they'll want to pass it on. Because, you know, once they learn God's word, they'll, they'll know that that's what we're supposed to do. Amen. Bad news travels quickly because it is shocking and unusual. <laughs> well, it really that's true I mean bad news travels really fast all the time I mean you always hear all oh, this happened here this bad thing happened there this is you know because it's a, not something that you're usually used to hearing about mm -hmm. well Christianity can be just as shocking and it can be just as unusual but it is an attractive and it's des it desperately needed in our world of sin Okay, I mean, you can't believe how many people couldn't tell you one verse in the Bible. I can't tell you how many people I've talked to that tell me verses wrong in the Bible. Because they think they know, and, but they don't truly believe, so they don't actually study it. You know, but it's good to, it's good to tell people about it. It's good to, you know, when somebody tells you something that's wrong... Explain it to them. Explain it to them why it's wrong. Show them. That's right. Amen. That it was wrong. And don't do it in a way that is rude. Do it in a way that is love and merciful. This guy God would do with us. Like he did do with us. Um, one person in the congregation can help the whole church to hear good news. So, all it takes is one person that heard something else from another congregation to bring it here and tell everybody else. That's all it takes. It's one person. You know, that's what I'm kind of stressing out of it. You get one person that's willing to do that, then you get an entire congregation that's willing to do that. And that's, that's what God's power really is. It's the whole church working together. But it only takes that one to spark it. You know, Lost my spot. <laughs> God loves and hears His people talking positively about His church. It honors Him and helps souls. Let us multiply good news in order to encourage Christians to follow the good and see and hear about it in others. So, we need to just multiply that good news. You know, so if that one person comes up here and tells the good news, well. It, Next week might be two, three, four, five, whole church. 
whole town, several congregations. You know, I, you know, I didn't even have to choose to set an example. You know, making a choice, making a choice is the first set step to setting an example. You have to make a choice, and the choice is to follow God. The choice is to be saved. The choice is to study your Bible. You know, to people who believe in many gods, Paul talked about one true God who was unknown to the people of Athens. In Acts 17, 22-31, absolute power, or he said that this was a God of absolute power, supreme intelligence, surpassing love, compared to him, any other God is inferior. The greatest wonder of all was not the majesty of God, but his nearness, for he is. So, in spite of the many, in their many God upbringing in Thessalonians, they had seemed different and had been eager to leave their inferior and enjoy the superior. You know, that's, they, they could feel it, you know. It's not just, they seen this and they seem just to benefit, but you know, once you receive that Holy Spirit, you can feel that attraction. You can feel what's wrong and what's not, you know, you, you know what you're doing. That's right. You know, because it will tell you that, no, that you probably ought not do that. <laughs> this is an important lesson for us to learn. God is superior to all other beings. God's word is superior to all other wisdoms. God's way is superior to every other lifestyle. However, He does not force us to follow Him. Just like in the men's class we're talking about. He doesn't necessarily come down here and slap us around and say, Hey, you need to follow us here. Walk this path there. No, he doesn't do that. The only thing he does is he presents us with the tools in order to achieve our goal. He presents us with other Christians to help us lift each other up. Because that's the main thing, is lifting each other up. You know, Not everybody's set out to preach. Not everybody's set out to be teachers. Everybody's got their own job. Because God has placed everybody according to where He wants you to be. He really has. I mean, I never thought I'd be up here. I never planned on being up here. To be honest with you. I had never planned on talking to a bunch of people about God. I had never thought of that in my life. It just kind of happened. That's what you call a blessing. That's exactly right. <laughs> it's where you call putting your treasures in heaven. Right. Um... Becoming a Christian and persisting in God's way is done by choice, not by force. No force involved. Only the benefit of blessings if we choose to let God adopt us. Make a choice for God by following His Word and living His way. And I want to, I got this from a book somebody had written. And I want this as well, I'm going to close it with. The power of a Christian is a Christian's example is something that God intended for us to hear and intended us for us to have as help in living Christian life. God began his work with the life of the Lord Jesus. He carried it on in the lives of the apostles who spread the gospel. They each set the example for the Christian teachers and other followers. The Thessalonian church followed their example and passed it on. Are we willing to follow follow this pattern? That's the question. Are we willing to continue on, to pass it on? Because that's how we keep God alive, and that's how we keep the church alive. <laughs> Thank you guys very much. Um, Thank you. Went by a lot faster again, like I thought, but it's all right. <laughs> and just study your Bibles. I mean, that's more important than anything. And help each other out. Spread the news. God bless you all.